Welcome back. The law firm of George Atomi and Partners last week celebrated 30 years of excellent service to its clients. One of the highlights of the celebration was a lecture which dwelt on the topic, Life Without Oil. We'll have the details in this next report. Some of the finest professionals in Nigeria have gathered in this room to discuss a very important topic, one which seeks to secure the future of the country by moving away from the over-dependence on oil. The occasion is the 30th anniversary of the law firm of George Etomi and Partners, and to celebrate what these professionals regard as 30 years of excellence is this inaugural speaker series with this important topic, Life Without Oil. The question that immediately comes to mind is, will there ever be such a life? The special guest, Governor of Lagos, Babatunde Fashola, a senior advocate of Nigeria, set the ball rolling by asking the more pertinent question of whether a better life with oil is possible for Nigeria and her people. The answer I will offer is an emphatic yes. The road to that better life is not too difficult in my view. It requires us to eliminate corruption at all levels of the oil industry. That road to a better life therefore requires us to take developmental and life-changing infrastructure projects like the East-West Road, the Second Niger Bridge, new refineries, petrochemical plants that will create economic growth and jobs out of the pipelines. In my humble view, the starting point is the urgent need to lend our voices to a resolution of the missing $20 billion. A resolution that must be in favor of the Nigerian people. If you know how much $20 billion can do to clean up the environment in the Niger Delta and clean up the water pollution in Alimosho, in Diamond Estate, and in Barua, you will not keep quiet. All you need to say is simple. Ask the question, what happened to $20 billion? That is another question this topic chose up and many more followed with the professionals here giving more deep insights and offering some solutions. Today, Nigeria budgets at $79, $79 dollars a barrel. Uh, what's happened to the difference between 79 and, and, and uh, 110 is a question we should all be asking. A lot of our problem really has to do with the fact that from the onset, we have not had a good framework within the country. The policy legal frameworks have been wrong and they have been geared towards optimizing revenue today at the expense of every other thing. We need to work on our population. Nobody is talking about it. Last year, it's estimated that we added 4 million naira. No matter how rich a nation can be, there's only so much you can do with that kind of teeming population. There's only a limit to the amount of infrastructure, if we're serious in developing that infrastructure, that we can do. I think population needs to be on the table. There is clearly a need to think outside the box, and two young entrepreneurs shared their experiences on how they started businesses outside of the oil base. If you just go on the internet and search for Taobao villages, it's, it's basically stopped or slowed down urbanization in many instances. So it's a model of e-commerce where anybody can come onto a marketplace, list their wares, whether those wares are agricultural produce like alligator pepper or, or apparel or whatever it is and sell and have access to a vast market and not need the, the capital to set up a shop and hire people. And so it flattens and it equalizes. Um, I think those are the kind of jobs we will we'll create. Look at Lagos. We generate 730,000 tons of plastic and metal annually. Unprocessed, that's about 41 billion naira. When you process it, it rises to 63 billion. And apart from the financial you know, gain, recycling, the waste sector, can create jobs. And we all know we need jobs in Nigeria. After agriculture, worldwide, recycling is the largest employer. At the end of the day, the consensus is this. No nation truly achieves distinction by being over-dependent on one commodity. And the path to national greatness for Nigeria truly requires economic diversification.
And it's on that note, we end today's episode of the program. You can watch the program again on our YouTube page. And you can interact with me via Facebook, email, or Twitter. I'm Shalashi Eli. Thank you for watching.